Hey guys, and welcome to my condensed summary of the Letter from the Earth producer live from the 14 hour livestream. I'm going to start by going over the schedule that they show during the live letter of the schedule of content and events to come until Dawn Trail's launch, which is going to include the Final Fantasy 16 collaboration event currently active until the 8th of May. The Yokai Watch event is going to begin on April 24th and runs until June 26th. I'm going to get into it later, but they do have new rewards if you've already done it before. They have the Make It Rain event that starts on May 15th and runs until May 31st. Then they have the Dragon Quest X collaboration event coming back, which is going to start on June 5th and running until June 20th. And then the Moogle Treasure Trove, the second hunt for Genesis, is going to begin on May 14th, running until June 24th. Before Dawn Trail's release, there is going to be two more letters from the producers live. The first one is going to be May 16th, and then after that is going to be on June 14th as the final one before Dawn Trail's launch. They are going to be taking the servers before pre-release down for 48 hours just before the early access for Dawn Trail begins on the 28th. And lastly, the media tour is going to begin on May 15th and will run until May 31st. There is no confirmation being stated on when the embargo, which would allow people to put the media tour content, is going to be lifted. Uh, so it is likely going to be sometime after May 31st, but again, that's just speculation. The live letter itself began by showing off the Dawn Trail benchmark trailer, which can be downloaded on Sunday, April 14th, so it's very soon, like two days from now, and in the benchmark we can see a ton of new job actions and a lot of good stuff in there, and I definitely look forward to analyzing it later, but no surprise to anyone here, the Sages 4 Newless into that big enemy explosion and then the Scholar's like Mega Chain Stratagem caught my eye. I am really praying that Chain Stratagem is a little bit more interactive with the kit, but we'll talk about that later. From the benchmark, I can tell you that the density of the villages and NPCs and just the graphical update is very impressive. Now, how to say it? The live letter went into a lot a lot of detail on graphics and I'm not going to be able to show off the full breadth of it here because it was something like an hour and a half of the live letter was just dedicated to it. So I'm going to be sprinkling in visuals that they showed as I talk about the next bit. Some of it might be video footage that I caught, some of it might be screenshots. Uh, also keep in mind that this was from a stream so it's going to look a lot better when you actually have it on your own computer. In terms of details from the graphics update, they definitely did include increasing the resolution of flora like grass and flowers on the ground like if they hovered in and like zoomed in there's a little bit of transparency added so that you could say see through a giant clump of grass or flowers they even showed that the graphics update is absolutely no doubt impacting older content like tailwind from town from heaven's Ward, which was one of my favorite towns i recognize it off the bat love that town and just like zooming in on random stuff like the cobblestones or like the eighth rites and even different glamour pieces when they zoomed in were a lot more crisp a lot more defined like they actually looked like they had a lot more texture to them even the skin for characters is smooth and shiny now see I'm going to be very honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of the original Lalafell Lala face focus. I didn't really understand. Well, I understood, but I almost felt like it was just a little stretched out. Not that I'm saying that's not important, but now that I see it now in game, I really understand like with the greater context of the game how relevant that was like the shine on the face and just how everything like came together that's very impactful and in terms of the graphics updates like it looks like they were like targeting like specific materials that are like spread out across the entire breadth of the game and i'm going to be honest when they went into the lost city of amdapur which is also one of my favorite dungeons ever i'm just like wow you're knocking out my one of my favorite little towns in the game and then like one of my all-time favorite dungeons i'm like this is just amazing um, and by all means, the the Lost City of Amdapur is ancient content, but I, my jaw kind of dropped seeing the difference, the quality of the stones, the rain, the random leaves that you can, or, I sorry, I'm talking about something else now, but like the Gridania, like they showed like this little map, which is just like the starter zone, this is like well over a decade old stuff, like you can see, if you zoom in, like the little leaves and little twigs on the ground in really good detail, just, it's so... As someone who's played for a decade, this is truly jaw-dropping, and to see the level of attention not just to the new content, but old content is just brilliant. Next up, they showed a little bit of footage from the city of Tyrell, which is going to be brand new with Sub.0, it's going to be one of our major hubs, but they did make it clear that it is still in development, and I can say when they swapped over to like the night scene, I 
I just had to add the footage to the video. I'm going to make sure that I have it here. This is like my new favorite night zone. This is just gorgeous beyond belief. I, I am such a fan of like these hanging lamps. It's so pretty. And then they also like climb to the top of the tower and like look down. Just absolutely incredible. Another thing that they added into the game that I really do want to highlight here because it actually is like super cool to see is like the eyes naturally even when you're looking at something they have like a little bit of a twitch like a saccade is what it's called and they added like this to the character's eyes like even random NPC in like Camp Drybone and it's just like you can see like obviously like the blinking but you can see the eye like move a little bit and this is such a cool little detail. Next step is that they are going to be adding settings utilizing NVIDIA DLSS and Super Resolution which is going to help reduce image resolution degradation as well as other features like dynamic resolution options like if you want to make sure that your FPS is consistent but that you're getting the most out of your system visually as possible dynamic resolution is going to be very good for you and there's going to be just there's too many options for me to really do in a condensed summary video but lots of resolution scaling resolution options being added onto i think they spent something like 20 or 25 minutes on this or something like that but there's going to be many graphics updates but not all features will be included as well for the consoles the xbox series s and the PlayStation 4, so some of those are being turned back off a little bit, or rather I should say disabled, some of these features are not going to apply to them. Now for other updates, and this is incredibly important for a lot of people because we have had a lot of security issues, and as someone who does do content creation, um, I have unfortunately faced the brunt of some people's anger. Um, I don't know why, but some people are like, hey, you make a YouTube video for fun as your side hobby, I'm going to harass your game, I'm like, uh please be nice i i don't get it but this is huge this has been much needed for a lot of us for a long time the first thing we're going to be talking about here is the mute list has been added to remove a person's text where blacklisting is going to remove the text as well as prevent their character from loading in outside of a duty where you are going to need to view their character for combat where that's going to be necessary but outside of combat, it's going to be gone. This will apply to all of your characters on your account, say for even like alts, say you have a bunch of different alts, this will apply across them. Blacklisted characters will also have their text stated as unknown in the party chat. You can, however, view their text if you opt in to do that. The developers have also added in what is called a term filter, where you can specify a specific term or phrase, such as... I mean, you can add any racial slur here that you want. Um, this term will then be removed from all of your chats and not your vision. This is going to be great for a variety of visions as someone who has made content and has gotten some very interesting messages. You can now also remove people from your estate too, which is incredibly useful because some people can be a little invasive in homes, and I've definitely had the experience before of people harassing me in my private home. This is definitely going to be extremely handy for RP venues and events to say the least, especially ones that are a little bit more, you know, ERP in nature. In the security update, which is probably what I should have called it in the first place, the security update also includes lodestone privacy settings that are being upgraded to help control viewership of things like profile achievements and friends and even remove yourself from lodestone character searches. There is also the blocked player list, also having like the blocked features, like say you block someone in game, these block features are also going to apply to the lodestone where they can't see your activity or block entries or notifications anymore. And guys, I had to say it, it is actually really fucked up, and I, I, there's no other way to say it. It is so fucked up that we even need all of these features, but I can tell you that, like, thank god it's never gone too much to the point with me, but we have some actual jerks in this game. And, like, I mean, even just, like, a week and a half ago, I was doing a duty with my main game while bragging, oh, I stole your man. You're, oh, I, I'm gonna move on. Sorry, it is just so fresh. Damn it. <laughs> Next up is that the Yokai Watch event is also coming back to Final Fantasy XIV on April 24th, which is awesome for people that haven't played it. Definitely take Blue Mage into it, but there's also going to be new rewards for players like me who did it a long time ago for this Framers kit. But if you haven't done it, you're going to be looking forward to some incredibly weird minions, incredibly weird skins, and the Jinban Yan couch, which I absolutely like. You've also got another mount, which is like this ghost that you can ride around. But I love the Jinban Yan couch, and unironically, I have posted screenshots of it and people have been like wait is that a modded mount and i'm like no <laughs> no it's not it's the Jin Binyan from the Yokai Watch event it's so cute but i'll definitely make like a Yokai Watch event guide and blue mage stuff and 
have a lot of fun with that, which I'm sure is going to help a whole lot of you. It's a really good event. Uh, but like, as you saw from the schedule, there's going to be a lot more events than just the Yokai Watch event. Anyhow, that does my coverage of the live letter. And I know a lot of this is really graphics. I know a lot of you are just like, hey, what about the Astrologen rework? What about the Dragoon rework? What about this or that? That is likely going to be talked about a lot in, especially the media tour, especially the media tour, but likely the two future live letters. And so definitely hold tight for that. I know that this has been very graphics heavy. Um, yeah. But yeah, hope everyone has a great weekend and take care everyone. I am seriously trying to just keep it together and this is so damn hard. I'm so lonely. <laughs>